Hey guys, welcome back to another Inputs On. We're gonna do something a little different today. We're actually gonna review a game that came out about a year ago. This game ended up having 2.7 million players total at one point and became a Twitch and YouTube phenomenon. Uh, the game is called Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. Now, before I start this review, I need to preface by saying that this was one of the worst games I have ever played in my life. Now, in order for me to explain why that is, I need to give you uh, history on how rage games came to be. When video games were in their infant state, developers weren't really sure how to, well, make games. A lot of early games on systems like the Intellivision struggled to make a game consistent and coherent to the player. Games on the Intellivision had a very skeletal blueprint of what a game could be without much conveyance as to what the objective was or even how the game worked. You would maybe get a sticker that you could put on the controller of the Intellivision that would give you the controls and how to play the game, but even if you turned on the game without those or with those, it would be sometimes hard to tell what your objective was. Now, as games developed and we started to see classics like Super Mario Brothers and The Legend of Zelda, game developers were able to convey how to play the game through simple early level design. So take Super Mario Brothers in its masterful way of explaining the game in the first level. You play as Mario and you go forward and you see a Goomba and then you get hit by the Goomba and you die and then start pressing some buttons and then you see Mario jumps and you keep going and you try to jump on the Goomba and bam, he's Pancake Man. And then you keep going and you see a couple of shiny question mark blocks and you hit one and it makes a coin noise and you're like, oh, it feels good. And then you hit a second one and then, oh my God, it was this and it's a mushroom and then you get the mushroom and then you get all big and and you keep going and then you hit another goomba and then you see that he gets small and then you start pressing other buttons and then you see mario can run and jump these games were designed to be difficult but to be fair and the reason they were designed to be difficult was to take your money now most of these games started to come out in the arcade era and in the arcade era game developers wanted to sell these arcade cabinets to hundreds of thousands of places and draw in hundreds of thousands of people and those people would spend an unbelievable amount of quarters and that's how these game developers would make money. So take something like Donkey Kong, for example, where the game is unbelievably punishing and difficult, but at least felt somewhat fair as you were playing the game and you felt like it was your fault when you couldn't get to a certain part of the game. As game consoles started to develop and get better, we started to see games get better graphics and have fully voice acted scenes and a fully developed story. And it was important that these games were made this way because it went from being a money making scheme to an art form. Uh, you'd start to see games like Dragon Age or Mass effect where these games had a, a story that they wanted to tell and the gameplay was here and there but mostly they just wanted to give you a story and as game consoles continue to develop we realized that you could make these games difficult through choice rather than a side effect take for example games like cuphead and dark souls and super meat boy these games were really tough but in order to offset that difficulty the devs made these games easy to control easy to learn and easy to understand your goal. These games also have impeccable level design with great enemy placement or levels that are specifically catered to the game's mechanics. Other difficult games like I Wanna Be The Guy were made to be difficult in a way that would throw people off with an almost backwards kind of design. The controls were good, but the conveyance is almost non-existent on purpose. These games hang their hat on trial and error through unexpected deaths rather than giving the player the opportunity to learn on the go and succeed. These games were made to be almost unfair to enrage the player in a trolling way. These games were made with the YouTube and Twitch audience in mind. And then you have other games that had bad controls, but these bad controls were on purpose for a reason. Games like I Am Bread and Surgeon Simulator purposely made these games difficult in, in order to have a juxtaposition of what's going on in the game. So take Surgeon Simulator, for example. You could just imagine that this surgeon has gone through an unbelievable amount of school and eight years of medical school in order to be this surgeon. And the guy seems like he's never even had hands before and he had a bottle of whiskey before he started. That was funny. The, the controls were designed to be bad, 
in order to drive home the comedic part of the game. Now, the problem with getting over it is that getting over it doesn't really convey any of that. It's no, it's not a troll game. It's not a difficult game with good level design, nor is it a game that's intentionally made to be bad in order to be funny. To give you a little history of Bennett Foddy, he's the guy who made Quop. Now, for people who don't know what Quop was, Quop was a HTML game that you were aware you played as a runner and this runner looked like he was in pretty good shape and you would use the keys Q W O and P to control his movement now it isn't just using one leg in the other to go forward you would actually control specific muscles of the character you would have to hit them in a specific order and a specific timing in order for him to actually start running what would normally end up happening is you would have some weird leg dragging or do some backflip and that was funny at the time it was it was funny to see this athlete who again you would imagine had trained his whole life to be an athlete and he looks like he literally has never had legs or knows what a human body is. Before I get into getting over it, I want to say that Bennett Foddy himself designed and and did everything in the game. He put he did the graphics, he put together and made the assets, he coded the game, he narrated it, and he voice acted the entire game. In a purely developmental sense, this is a feat and should be praised. From the standpoint of it being a good game, it's one of the worst things I've ever played. As mentioned earlier games that are designed to be difficult are either intentionally made to troll you or their difficulty is more a product of their design and not a fully intended but welcome consequence getting over as neither of these yet tries to be both at the same time the result is an inconsistent mess of a game that should have never seen the light of day in getting over it your objective seems simple enough you climb a mountain to the top and as the game fades in you're greeted to a naked buff man trapped inside a cauldron from the waist down the man is also given a hammer that will be your only tool to get over this mountain that is made up of random household items and structures. The only control you have is a mouse that is used to swing the hammer 360 degrees in order to gain momentum from cliffs and edges of objects. Other times you'll have to use your hammer as a pogo stick to bounce yourself vertically to another cliff or landing. The catch is that you can fall from a great height and end up right back where you started no matter how far you are. The simplicity of it all is the best part of the game. You get started quickly and you understand it quickly. However, simplicity doesn't mean it's easy or intuitive. The game's camera becomes a major issue in the game since the camera tries to follow the head of the hammer and adjust to it. When climbing the mountain with a great deal of momentum, the camera will bounce and cause the player to also bounce off of a cliff or an edge, even if they remained stationary. Since the stakes are so high, losing a lot of progress, which by the way, your progress is saved whether you go higher up the mountain or you fall all the way down the mountain. When you lose in this way, it feels really cheap and unfair. To add to this, using the pogo stick method is beyond inconsistent. Sometimes you'll fly so far and fast that there's no way to prepare for what might happen and then other times you'll gain no height for no reason as you repeatedly try to ascend without any indication for what you're doing wrong. This game tries to be trial and error but the error isn't something that can be learned from. You end up being at the mercy of the game and hoping at one point this game decides to work. If this was a troll rage game then I'd give it slack as sometimes difficult and overly precise controls adding to the joke. But getting over it isn't this type of game. As I mentioned before Foddy fully voice acted this game as the cauldron man and he narrated the game the narrator is not the mind of the man or a representation of the player it's just bennett foddy talking to you during the game foddy explains to the player why and how he made this game foddy mentions that this game was inspired by a game called sexy hiking created by a developer simply known as jazuo foddy goes on to say that jazuo was the father of what people call b games as described by foddy and i quote b games are rough assemblages of found objects Designers slap them together very quickly and freely, and they're often too rough and unfriendly to gain much of a following. They're built more for the joy of building than them as polished products. In other words, B games are poorly made and thus not fun at all to play. Fadi also mentions that he developed this game to simulate the feeling of starting over after making progress, such as accidentally erasing your homework before it's due. He provides several quotes and accompanies songs that drive home the feeling of sadness, failure, or motivation. Fadi also lists wanting to make the game stand out a amongst the internet garbage culture that we digest daily. This includes YouTube videos, vines, live leak footage, tweets, green screen, Shia LaBeouf, etc. Some of its points when it comes to these reasons are 
very sound and salient. The issue isn't what he's saying, but on what soapbox he uses to say it. During most of the game, Fadi hurls unnecessary insults while insisting his game will teach you a life lesson. He puts down the Twitch and YouTube audience by comparing them to a baby bird being fed chewed up food. He lists easily digestible and beatable games as part of the garbage culture. What Fadi is essentially saying is his game will stand out specifically because he made it difficult, and that in turn will show you what he is trying to teach. This would be all well and good if the game was designed well. As mentioned previously, Fadi made this game with the intention of making it a B game, which is slapped together haphazardly with intent. He also admitted in an interview with Kotaku that he developed the game with a $5 mouse in an era where people constantly look for the newest PC gear. Overall, Fadi made a bad game while knowing it is a bad game while claiming it isn't a bad game. What ends up happening is Fadi sounding like an old fogey and judging others for what they like and do not like. These B games that Fadi talks about are not this untapped art form, but rather I view them more like a coloring book in terms of being an artist. You experiment with colors and you draw outside the lines and you make the dragon zebra pattern while it blows green fire. These aren't designed to be brilliant art pieces and instead be an intro to the fundamentals of art. What Fadi is essentially doing is scribbling on a giant piece of paper and claiming, I'm an artist, admire my work. I watched Billy do it this one time in class and he got an A. You can't tell people how to feel about a piece of art. When you release a piece of art, it's now at the mercy of public judgment. It's like telling a joke and then having to explain the punchline. If you must explain your joke, then the joke isn't very good. Overall, Fadi can explain his reasoning and motivation behind getting over it, but that will never make it a good game and it'll never make him look less condescending and gatekeeping. Bennett Fadi is the pastor of a super church who preaches to people on how to be giving and loving all while asking for your credit card number and the three digit code on the back. He thinks very little of the people he's talking to and will constantly talk down to you while expecting praise as a game developer who is somehow more woke than other devs. His actions with making this game are at constant odds with his message and Fadi's lack of self-awareness severely hampers the entire experience. To hear him constantly in your ear with his dribble as you struggle with awful controls and camera stability make this game an absolute nightmare to play. This game doesn't teach you a lesson. This game doesn't make you feel accomplished for completing it. Even the reward at the end of the game is a ho-hum reward. At the end of the day, this game really isn't anything. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. I sincerely appreciate any and all feedback that you guys give me. If you want to comment, just leave a comment down below. Uh, if you want to debate about anything that I was said, as long as it's a civil discussion, I don't mind. You can do it there in the comments and I will respond or maybe something on a social media platform, however you want to do it. Uh, we also have plenty of other videos for you guys to watch. We have more inputs on. We have one on the messenger and Celeste from Togi or Chester, or I don't know, whatever he wants to call himself. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, maybe like put a Let's Play or a podcast or whatever down there. I don't know. I'll decide when I do it. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.